Hello all, in this video, I'm going to cover the AWS Developer Associate DBA C02 Learning Path. I recently passed the AWS Developer Associate exam with a score of 835 and I would like to share the experience and some key tips. The Developer Associate DBA C02 was released on 28th of February. 2023 and it is an updated version of the DBA C01 exam. The AWS Developer Associate exam is more focused on your ability to demonstrate proficiency in developing, testing, deploying and debugging AWS cloud-based applications. The key domains covered in the Developer Associate exam include development with AWS services, security, deployment, and troubleshooting with optimization. The development with AWS services mainly focuses on application development with architectural patterns like event-driven, microservices, service orchestration, implementing fault-tolerant design patterns, knowing the difference between stateful and stateless, monolithic and microservices, loosely coupled and tightly coupled, synchronous, asynchronous, and relational and non-relational databases. Security covers developing solutions with proper access control, authentication and authorization, encryption at rest and in transit, managing secure data, and security best practices. Deployment covers the process of preparing build artifacts, testing, automated deployments using the AWS CI-CD developer tools. Troubleshooting and optimization covers the ability to troubleshoot issues and performing root cause analysis, instrumenting your code for observability and optimizing applications by using AWS services and features. You can go through the exam guide mentioned in the description for more details. The Developer Associate exam consists of 65 multiple choice, multiple response questions to be answered in 130 minutes. The DVA C02 has a scale score between 100 and 1000 and the score needed to pass the exam is 720. There is no negative marking so make sure you attempt all. Associate exams currently cost $150 plus tax. You can get additional 30 minutes if English is your second language by requesting exam accommodations. I have mentioned the link in my blog below. AWS exams can be taken either remotely or online. I prefer to take them online as it provides a lot of flexibility. AWS does not release the results immediately now. You would have the updated results within 4 to 5 days after you take your exam. I prepared for the exam for about a month and a half, a month mainly going through the online course and trying out hands-on, and the last 15 days practicing the tests and looking out for my weaker areas and reading AWS documentation. I would recommend to have a consistent game plan for every week, take out an hour each day to go through the online course and do some hands-on experiences. I've listed down some of the resources below that I used. Just choose an online course and practice test set and you should be good to go. As AWS exams are quite expensive, so be prepared and confident before you appear for the exam. The Developer Associate exam covers the design and architecture aspects in deep. So you must be able to visualize the architecture, even draw out a mental picture just to understand how it would work and how different services relate. I have covered some topics below, so be sure to go through that blog post for details. AWS keeps on adding new services as the exam is updated. Elastic Compute Cloud or EC2 provides compute in the cloud, auto-scaling with load balancer, 
helps building highly available and scalable applications. Auto scaling helps applications scale as per the demand, while load balancer allows the incoming traffic to be distributed automatically across multiple healthy EC2 instances spanning multiple AZs. Lambda provides serverless application. The exam covers a lot of Lambda features. Lambda integrates with API Gateway and can be used with X-Ray for distributed tracing. Lambda execution role provides Lambda the access to integrate with other AWS services. You can use environment variables to keep Lambda functions configurable. Lambda layers provide a convenient way to package libraries and other dependencies that you can use with your Lambda functions. Lambda supports aliases and versions to manage deployment of functions. Remember, versions are immutable while aliases are mutable. Know the Lambda limits. Lambda does not provide CPU configurations. You need to tune the memory configurations to tune the CPU. Lambda provides ephemeral scratch storage as well. You can use RDS proxy for connection pooling. No elastic beanstalk and its deployment strategies. Understand relational and NoSQL data storage options, which include RDS, DynamoDB, and Aurora with their use cases and anti-patterns. RDS provides relational database. Remember, read replicas help in scalability and multi-AZ provides high availability and fault tolerance. RDS proxy provides a fully managed, highly available database proxy for RDS that makes application more secure, scalable, and resilient to database failures. DynamoDB provides low latency, performant, key-value NoSQL store. Exam covers a lot of DynamoDB features, including secondary indexes on table, allow efficient access to data with attributes other than the primary key. No, local secondary indexes versus global secondary index, and when to use them. DynamoDB Accelerator, or DAX, provides caching for DynamoDB. DynamoDB Time to Live or TTL helps expire data in DynamoDB without any cost or consuming any write throughput. DynamoDB Streams provide time ordered sequence of item level changes made to the data in the table and it integrates with Lambda. Be sure to know the DynamoDB best practices around designing partition keys and secondary indexes. The exam does not cover calculation of provision throughput anymore as it did in the previous exam. But just make sure you understand the calculations. Elastic Cache provides Redis and Memcached for caching and improving performance. Understand various storage options like S3, EBS, Instant Store, EFS, Glacier, FSX and what are the use cases and anti-patterns for each. S3 provides object storage. Exam does cover a lot of S3 features. Be sure to know the different storage classes and lifecycle policies. S3 data protection helps an encryption at rest and in transit and how do you enforce them. S3 versioning, pre-signed URLs, cores, transfer acceleration, and S3 event notifications. Glacier provides low-cost archival solution. Instant Store and EBS provides block storage for EC2 instances. Instant Store is ephemeral, while EBS is persistent. EFS or Elastic File System provides a simple, fully managed, scalable, serverless, and cost-optimized file storage for use with AWS Cloud and on-premises resources. It supports the NFS protocol and is only compatible with Linux-based AMIs. 
understand identity and access management IAM. IAM roles provide permissions that are not associated with a particular user, group or service and are intended to be assumable by anyone who needs it. Make sure to use them with your EC2 instances. Make sure you know IAM best practices in terms of least privilege. Cognito provides authentication, authorization and user management for the web and mobile apps. Be sure to understand the difference between user pools and identity pools. KMS management services helps in key management for encryption at rest. It does not provide encryption in transit. Use ACM to provision SSL certificates for encryption in transit. Secret managers help protect secrets and support automatic secret rotation for services like RDS Document DB. API Gateway provides a fully managed service that makes it easy for developers to publish, maintain, monitor and secure APIs at any scale. Exam covers a lot of features including powerful flexible authentication mechanisms such as IAM policies, Lambda or custom authorizer functions and Amazon Cognito user pools. API Gateway supports canary release deployments for safely rolling out your changes. It also supports usage plans to meter, restrict third-party developer access, configuring throttling and quota limits on a per API key basis. It integrates with X-Ray for understanding and triaging performance latencies. It supports cores for cross-domain calls. The exam also covers a bit of Amplify that helps front-end web and mobile developers to easily build, ship and host full-stack applications on AWS. Know the management and governance tools in general. CloudWatch for monitoring and observability. EventBridge or CloudWatch events for notifications and actions. CloudTrail helps in governance, compliance and operational risk auditing. CloudFormation provides infrastructure as a service and aids in infrastructure automation. SQS as a messaging service to help build loosely coupled architectures. Exam covers SQS features including SQS visibility timeout. Know the differences between standard and FIFO queues. FIFO maintains the order of the messages and provides exactly one's delivery. However, it has a very low throughput as compared to the standard queues. Know SNS as the pub sub service. Know the SNS fan out pattern. AWS developer tools are also covered. Code commit provides source control. Code build is a fully managed build service that helps compile source code, run tests, and produces software packages that are ready to deploy. Code deploy helps in code deployments to any instances, including EC2 and instances running on premises. Code Pipeline is a fully managed continuous delivery service that helps automate the release pipelines for fast and reliable application and infrastructure updates. Code Artifact is a fully managed artifact repository service. X-Ray helps developers analyze and debug production distributed applications. The exam does not cover much of networking and analytics services, but just be sure to understand VPC or virtual private cloud and its components. Make sure you are relaxed and get some good night's sleep. Make sure you reach on time or log in early in case you are taking the exam remotely. If you are taking the test online, please check in early as the online verification process does sit, take some time and usually there are some glitches. Also, I prefer to use passport for my identification. Make sure you have your desk clear, no hand watches, phones away and nobody can enter the room. Remember, you cannot take the test if you turn up for the test 
30 minutes over your test time. That's it. All the very best for your exam. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.